All right, team. So now that you have your parts been completed, you have your flanges made and you have your hands completed. The next step is to create two things. You want to create a drawing so the human beings know how to what their what your shape is and what the basic dimensions. And then we also need to create a DXF drawing that we're going to use to bring into TorchMate CAD. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a four uh four view drawing so all i can do what i can do is i can select the thing i can right click and i can say create drawing of sheet metal parts bin and if i do that now i have this four views option i'm going to pick an inch because i was working in inches i'll do ANSI c for that that will create your sheet metal parts bin there cool um, now you have probably already done this and created a full size six by seven, 16 by seven, about uh, by eight inch tall bin, which is really, really large once you flatten it out, right? We've looking over here, you can see this thing is gonna be huge. It's gonna take up most of a sheet. So let's get in here and do a little bit of uh, configuration. So open up the configuration panel. And this is what I did as I created two configurations. I created a list type, which is our box size. And I configured our dimensions from our first sketch. I did the top, which you might have started from the side as well. That's fine. You can right click and hit configure dimensions here to add those to the table. The other thing that I did that was a little bit different is I added a metal thickness in here and you can add this after the fact you just need to find variable let me show you where to find variable so if you can't find any a tool you just go up to the tool search tools up here in the top right and you hit start typing what you're looking for and look there's variable so i can select variable and that'll add a variable in this case i want a link type variable and i can show you the, the settings that i did i've got thickness, and then I typed in a value here. And I'm actually configuring this with our with a, with a variable in configuration. So that way I can come in and without doing a whole lot of change, I can actually change it up here in the box. Maybe I want a thicker metal. This is the gauge metal that I'm using, but let's say I, maybe I want 1.125. It will update my model for that thicker metal. But I'm going to go change it back to the 0 0.0598. That should be the things of metal that you are designing your box in. All right. So there we go. Um, in that, let's do a smaller size. And I have some basic dimensions here. You might want to change that. You might change these a little bit to fit your locker. If you're making a locker size box, um, I'm just doing a half size. Let's actually make this. Um, let's make this a five by five by five and we'll just make a little cube i think that's a good size let's change the name of it here and let's make it a little bit bigger maybe six by five clears six by six by five See what that looks like. I want to clear the flanges, so that's not an issue. Cool. All right, so there's my box, and I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to create another drawing. Let me close out of this. The next drawing that I'm going to create, go to insert. I'm going to create another drawing. This one I'll pick a uh, large size. I want to do ANZ D, big size, biggest I can find. And I'll hit enter. Just so like that. Now, before I insert anything, I'll actually close out of insert. What I want to do here, close out of insert, is I want to grab all this stuff here, and I'm just going to delete this, because this is going to become my DXF. So I'm going to call this one DXF export. There we go. And now I'm going to insert that flattened view. So insert, I hit this insert button to figure out what I want to put in there. I'm looking for flat patterns. And the size that I want is the thin size and make sure I got the right material thickness in this case 0 0.0598. I say generate to generate that configuration. There's my flat pattern that I want. Make sure my Scott, this is the one that's really important. Make sure that size is one to one. Otherwise, when you go to cut this, it will not cut. 
And there it is. I'll hit escape to get out of the tool. This is the thing that I'm going to export. So let's do that step next. So I come over here to DXF export. I'm going to right click and hit export. In this case, instead of the format of PDF, I'll go down to DXF. Um, we'll go ahead and leave those text things as text because we're not going to use that. And uh, we can set all those things as normal. Let's go ahead and export that DXF. And then I will open up Torchmate and meet you over there. All right, so I've got Torchmate tad open. I'm going to go over to File and I'm going to imp import because I'm coming from another program, just like I import from another country. And now I'm looking over in desktop. I move this around a little bit and save this with a better name. Uh, sort of like date modified here. There it is. Sheet metal bin, TXF export. I renamed it a little bit so it'd be easier to find. Do import. And then it's going to tell me, hey, where's the top left corner? There's my top left corner. In this case, I definitely want to work in poly arcs. My scale is in inches. Remember that we were working in inches, so make sure you keep that same dimension here. And we'll leave everything else as is. We'll bring your object in. Now, I want to show you something. If I go to view fill, Sometimes it'll do this correctly and sometimes it won't, but this case I got lucky. It actually brought all those outside lines in. They're in color. That's great. I'm gonna double check that it did this correctly. If I click double click to get into edit mode and I hit tab, I should be able to go all the way around and look at that. That looks great. Um, sometimes it won't do this, so you might need to do a little bit of selection magic. If it's not coming in as one piece, what I like to do is I like to come over here and select everything that's red. If you click on this little red thing, you can see how it selects everything that's red. Let's change its color because red is actually a bad one for selection. Um, over here is a little toggle to switch between line and fill. So I want to change it the line over to this blue. And I also want to flip this back to line and change. Sorry, that was fill that I changed and also change this one to a blue, um, which is a little confusing. P5 is not a good choice. Let me go back a few steps. We already used a blue, so let's make it green. Excuse me. And I'll make the fill green too. All right, that way when we do view show fill, that looks great. All right. I'm also gonna grab all that blue. I'm gonna go over here to group the blue. So now I've got show fills working correctly. I've got that outside. In blue, I'm going to come in and grab everything and start adding toolpaths, right? So my green toolpath, I need to add a male type toolpath. And this one isn't set up, but uh, we can use a feed rate. Let's let's go in here and create a tool, create toolpath. We might already have one set up, but let's call this a uh, 16 gauge. You'll probably need a new one anyways. Let's start with a new tool, we'll call it mild. 16 gauge, the thickness is 0 0.0598, and hit add. Sixteen gauge male toolpath. The color that's not black. Add. We're going to make sure we're using the plasma cutter. Our feed rate for this, we're going to make a guess at 60. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet because we haven't done our testing, but we'll start with 60 as a good starting point. Uh, create a lead in. We'll do a line. Um, in this case, let's do an eighth of an inch. That seems like a really good number for most of these. And 45 degrees is always a good place to start. And I'll hit change to save those and hit OK. There's my plasma tool pass. And then I would create a uh, toolpath also for those online engraving, but that's not set up yet. So I'll spare you the details on that, but you already know that process. That's how you get these set up. Um, once you're done with that, as always, you're going to save your work. And this EDU file is what you're going to submit. So I would call this uh, sheet metal bin because I want to make sure I get credit for my work and I can find it when it's time to plasma cut. I will put my name on the end. And that's the EDU that I will submit.
make sure that you set up your engraving tool pass. I don't have mine set up yet, but you've got that set up on your personal machine, so you should be able to get that going.